In my last USB video, I told you how the USB protocol worked and how you could use a special Atmega 16U2 microcontroller to communicate over USB to act as a keyboard. And while perhaps this is one of the better ways to utilize USB, since the small details are taken care of by the hardware, there's another way that involves no special hardware whatsoever, but rather uses firmware to run the USB protocol. And that method is known as the VUSB library. You may decide to use a library like this on devices such as the Atmega 328P, or more famously known as an Arduino Uno, since they don't have the necessary USB hardware to communicate. There are a few limitations with it though, which I'll talk about more during the video. I will also be showing you how the HID protocol works. This is just the protocol on top of USB that we'll use to run the keyboard. Well, without any further introduction, let's start the video. As I've just told you in the introduction, VUSB is not a hardware controlled implementation. Instead, it is one that is run inside of the firmware. This does mean that any old AVR can use USB, but it does come with a cost. If you watch the first video, you will know just how involved the USB protocol is, and there are a lot of steps in abstraction layers. Luckily, VUSB handles this for you, but keep in mind it comes at the cost of a massive CPU load. This means that there isn't much time for any processing other than USB. It is possible to circumvent this by perhaps having another microcontroller handle most of the processing and then send it over to the USB microcontroller. But that's beyond the scope of this video. But what is in the scope of this video, though, is the HID protocol, how it works, and how we can implement it using VUSB. If you were inspired by my hardware USB video, you can still learn about the HID protocol here. The ideas are the exact same. Anyways, let's set up the circuit that we will need to create this HID keyboard. I decided to skip the breadboard and solder most of the circuit together this time. What you will need is a few buttons, three LEDs, a few resistors, a 12 MHz crystal, and most importantly, your microcontroller. The crystal is used by the VUSB library to correctly time the USB data transfer. You can pick another value crystal, but keep in mind that the clock options are rather strict. You can only use 12, 12.8, 15, 16, 16.5, 18, and finally 20 MHz clock sources, all of which are crystals except for the 12.8 and 16.5 options. The strictness is due to the need for the clock to be precise enough to operate on the USB protocol. You will also need a 3.3 volt regulator, since while the USB voltage line is 5 volts, the data lines are instead run on 3.3 volts. Simply make it easy on yourself and just power the entire circuit with 3.3 volts to begin with, because the microcontroller is capable of running in 3.3 volts anyways. I use an AMS1117 linear regulator to do the job, but you can use any old linear regulator that fits the specs here. This little IC was tricky to solder on since it is meant to be an SMD component, but I still managed to solder it in the end. Anyways, here's the full schematic for this circuit. It is also in the description if you would prefer to see it in that way. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's dive into the HID protocol. This is a protocol that is typically implemented over USB but it has also proved to be protocol agnostic, with it also being used in places like Bluetooth. But we will be covering HID in a USB context. Anyways, HID communication is done using two distinct forms of information, report descriptors and reports. From a top-down perspective, report descriptors simply describe how the data will look inside of the reports themselves. This idea of a descriptor is carried down from the USB protocol. Here's a hierarchy of descriptors in a USB device. The device descriptor and the configuration descriptor both describe exactly the device is. And the interface descriptor describes what a certain subset of the device will do and how many endpoints it will need. In our case, the interface descriptor will describe this interface as an HID device. Beyond that point, we will get into HID specific territory. The HID descriptor tells us how many report descriptors and how many physical descriptors we will have. This video will focus on report descriptors since physical descriptors are optional and only describe which parts of the human body will interact with which parts of the device. Report descriptors really make up the bulk of the work when using the HID protocol, since there are a lot of options. There are three types of reports described by the descriptors, and they are input, output, and future reports. Input reports are the ones in which data is being sent to the host, such as the keyboard data. Inversely, output reports are where data is being sent to the device, such as toggling the caps lock LED. 
Feature reports are not intended for user interaction, but more for internal communication. If you have noticed, these interactions seem familiar, and that is because they can be somewhat represented by USB transfers, which I talked about in the previous video. In fact, the HID specification even classes this as being synonymous to each other. Let's take a moment to talk about the methods in which data can be transferred by using USB. Each HID device can have bidirectional communication over endpoint zero. And while this might be enough for a few applications, there is also another required USB endpoint, which is an interrupt in endpoint. This will provide more bandwidth than just the control transfers by themselves. And if your device requires it, you can set up the optional interrupt out endpoint as well. Great, but how can we determine what the data means, not just which direction? Well, for that, let's go back to the report descriptors. Like I said, they describe reports, similar to device and endpoint descriptors. There's a key difference in the layout of the data, though. In device and endpoint descriptors, the data is a fixed size table. Conversely, report descriptors are made up of what are called items. These items have no predefined structure, meaning that you can completely customize how the reports will look at the cost of a little more complexity. Let's say that we have an input report planned, and we need to send over all the control keys on a keyboard. Those would be the Control, Alt, GUI, and Shift keys. First, we would need to tell the computer that we are sending those keys. And to do that, we can use what is called a usage item. A usage describes what a particular set of data represents. So in our case, those control keys. We can then add a few more items to format the data. We can use the logical min and logical max items to tell what the range of our data will be. So since they are buttons, they will either be a 1 or a 0. The report size tag means how many bits each usage will be. And again, since they are 1-bit button presses, we'll just use 1 bit each. And since we have 8 control keys, we will need to describe that too. So we'll use the report count item and give it an 8. So we have just described 8 bits of data that will represent our control keys. But this is just one small portion of the entire descriptor. So let me show you the one that I have created. This chunk here is the one that we have just looked at. Anyways, let's go from the top down. Starting at the top, we have a usage page call. This is distinct from the usage tag since it basically dictates what the usage means. There is a rather large document, which I will link below, that basically guides you in this. If we select the general usage page, we can select from this table of usages. And that shows the keyboard usage within that. The next item is the collection. This basically groups up different reports under one idea, which is our keyboard usage. Going inside of the collection, we will find another usage page but this time it's the keyboard table. This essentially allows us to select the keys on the keyboard just like described earlier. We already covered this section, so let's go to the next section. It's very similar, but with a few few differences. We select the user's minimum to be the first key on the keyboard and the maximum to be the last key that we will use. We will also set the logical min and maxes to the minimum and maximum key codes. This time, the keys will be arranged as one by each with a maximum of six being reported at once. We will use an array type input to return a maximum of six keys back to the computer. Finally, we have the output section, which is similar to the first one. We will use the LED page to select our numlock, caps lock, and scroll lock LED outputs. And finally, we end the collection. Well, now that we have the human readable version, we need to convert it to the one as used by the protocol. And for that, I've manually compiled mine. You can simply copy mine if you would want. But if you want to make your own like I did, simply cross-reference what each item's hex code is. For example, the usage minimum is a hex 19. There's also a useful website that you can use to double check your work and make sure that your hex values match what you're intending. And that is basically it for the HID protocol. It isn't too bad. The hard part for us will be translating our VUSB code into the HID protocol. So let me tell you how to set up your own VUSB project. The first thing that you should do is download the VUSB library from the VUSB website. I'll provide a download link to that in the description. From there, you should make a new folder and place and extract the VUSB library into that. Inside the VUSB library, look for a folder named USB DRV. This is what you will need to compile the VUSB library into your project. Move this folder into your project folder. And inside the VUSB DRV folder, you will also find a file called usbconfigprototype.h. Copy this and place it into the project folder.
and also rename it to usbconfig.h. Now let's edit this usbconfig.h file. The first things that you will need to do is edit the placements of the USB data lines. I put mine on port D on pin 0 and 2. Going further down, look for this line and change it to a 1. It basically will activate our required interrupt in the next endpoint. Next, you will have to jump further down to the device descriptor section. If you have your own vendor ID, replace it here. Otherwise, leave it as is, since OBDev has kindly provided a free vendor ID that we can use. You should change the device ID as necessary though, and I changed mine to the one defined as a keyboard. Next, change the vendor and device names. If you have one, change the vendor name to your name. I changed mine to signlab.net for example. The device name is up to you, but I changed it to keyboard. Next up are the device and interface classes. Since we don't want to define behavior at the device class level, we'll put a zero to indicate that we will be using an interface descriptor instead. Then change the interface class to a hex3, which stands for our HID class. Finally, put in the size of bytes of your HID descriptor. And now we are done with the usbconfig.h edits. Let's get to the fun part and write our code. The first thing that you will need to do is include a few header files. Include the usbdrv.h, evr/io.h, evrinterrupt.h, evrprogramspace.h, and avrwatchdogtimer.h headers. Here's the bare minimum code flow that you need to include in your program. First, enable the watchdog timer. This is basically used to reset the microcontroller in case there's ever a time where a bug occurs and the device can't recover. From there, you should do any specific device setup, such as pulling up your buttons, for example. Then, you need to initialize the vUSB library with the USB init function. Immediately after, enable interrupts. From there, you should re-enumerate the USB device since the USB in the computer may not have the same address. To do that, simply disconnect the USB device and then reconnect it after a short delay. Now you can get into the main loop, the two functions that you need to do in the watchdog reset and the USB pull functions. This is the basic structure of the program, but we are aiming to add keyboard functionality. To do that, we need a few more methods. Remember our USB interrupt in endpoint. Well, we can use that to send our reports. And for that, we will use the USB interrupt is ready function to check that we are able to send data over the endpoint. If we can, then we will send our data buffer using the USB set interrupt function. The other code that I added around this was simply adding an idle rate that will either slow down or speed up the rate of our key presses being sent. We have some other required methods that we will need to use to define ourselves. First, we need to give the microcontroller our HID descriptor. Simply put it in as an array called USB HID Report Descriptor. We also need to define a method called USB Function Setup. This is basically what is called when our control endpoint needs attention. The main things we will do here are setting reports, just like the USB interrupt in endpoint, and setting the idle rate. We can also reject the output requests to another function by returning the USB no message when it is brought up. And to handle those output requests, you will define the USB function write function to toggle our LEDs when something like caps lock is activated. And that is basically it as far as it goes for the explanation of the code. It is complicated at first, but you can definitely get used to this. If you got lost anywhere in my explanation, feel free to check out the link in the description. It contains the entire project from schematic all the way to the code. After this project, I have another small USB keyboard to play with. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing so that you can see my other videos. Have a good one and good luck with your VUSB projects.